All right, I'm going to try to be as sensitive as possible because anytime something is involving someone dying, it, it's a tragedy. But what I cannot tolerate is fear mongering and illogical, um, just fear. And yo, don't let these idiots put fear on the inside of you when it comes to this Corona virus. And we just need to know like, yo, you are doing way more harm on media, social media, than we can even account for when it comes to um, misdirection, false information, and just like overall, just pandemonium and um, propaganda. So I need everybody just to know the facts, not act so irrationally, and just behave normally in short. So just um, going off of um, what's happening, I know everything's not about money, but I really wanna talk about like, yo, do y'all know what y'all are doing with all these like media esca escapades and everything that's coming up in the news cycle um, monetarily? So the NBA has just uh, canceled all the rest of the NBA games in the season. So it's going to be postponed indefinitely, right? March Madness, no um, people in the stands. Um, South by Southwest, canceled. $300 million gone, eradicated from freaking um, the Texas economy and um, Donald Trump suspending any uh, uh, flights out to Europe or receiving from Europe for the next 30 days. And this is the big thing I want y'all to know when it comes to the economy. Y'all have, from fear, not like rational fear, but from fear, y'all have shorted the stock market and you're making like, we are seeing like dips and it was supposed to be like a gradual like problem, but it will recover. You y'all are making like a legitimate recession because of fear and um, the money not cycling um, properly. So we have been in a bull uh, market and now we're moving to a bear market, which could actually lead to like a real recession. I thought that it was going to be like a little fake recession. Um, everything's going to go back to normal, but all the businesses um, closing down and all these um, precautions that we're taking for just a pandemonium not but um, we're implementing a state of pandemic so I I just want to run the markets um, by you and the numbers because like the stock market is kind of like collapsing ish and it's dropped by um, when this video is being recorded 15% and why this is actually important to you is this phrase a sneeze to the rich is a funeral to the poor. And so uh, what that means is that we, the regular person, is affected differently when it comes to tragedy, the economy, and um, natural disasters way differently when it comes to um, the rich, right? And so we are not moving we we are stopping all um trade well not stopping all trade we are stopping all flights um essentially we're stopping um concerts getting shut down businesses um getting shut down and um events tours because of a coronavirus and it is more harmful in name than it's actual like the death toll and you need to know what fear mongering looks like from the news cycles and from the medias. And so what they're leading with is the number of cases. They are not leading with the number of deaths. So you need to know like, yo, what are the number of deaths? Not the number of cases and infections, but you need to know even with the number of cases, how many people are recovering from it? It's, it's not even hitting regular flu numbers, right? So this is worldwide numbers, right? The coronavirus has killed probably 4,000 to 5,000 people, right? Boom. The regular flu in 2020 has killed 5,000 people in the United States alone. You know how many people have died from the coronavirus in the United States right now? 34 or 29, I can't remember. But that is, we aren't even worried about the flu. And the average age of the people dying of the coronavirus, 
What is the age? 80 year olds. The average age is 80 year olds. So of course people with weakened immune systems are dying. And I just wanna chime this in. So people don't listen to conspiracy um, theorists. People love fear. People love controversy. People love irrational um, behavior. So people are saying um, China may have made this in the providence of Wuhan. Hey, whatever, I don't know if I believe this. I'm going with the more um, likely epidemic. It says that people were eating bats and the disease came from eating bats in the province of Wuhan in China. Surprise, surprise, when you <laughs> knock out the Bible, the book where it has a whole bunch of eating laws about, hey, don't eat these unclean animals. And we're like, no, let us eat wherever we want and guess what the book of Leviticus in the Bible says not to eat? It says don't eat bats. So if you are eating bats and disease is spreading from there, I don't think it's a surprise. But you also have to look at the cases from developing countries to developed countries. The United States is a developed country, right? Um, China is moving from a underdeveloped developing country and to a developed country. So the difference is, is that our healthcare here is very different. And so people with weakened immune systems are the ones that are dying. And I don't want to make light of that. Death is like a real thing and it should be saddened. But I, I think we should be more afraid of the results and the consequences of us not flying places, us not going into work, and um, just overall the economy being suspended uh, for so long, like 30 days. And you're talking about implementing martial law in the United States? That is like the precepts to like the new world order um, where you're like giving all your rights over to the government um, to protect you um, in crisis without thinking what are the longevity of the consequences of us not having money cycling but us being under quarantine and us having a freaking curfew to stop um, the transactions when it comes to business. But yo, um, again, a sneeze to the rich is a funeral to the poor. The rich, if you're on salary or if you're not middle class and you're like upper class um, when it comes to income, you can suspend your um, businesses. You can not buy or sell or travel because you have a savings. And um, you have like these big companies like Apple, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Google, YouTube, or um, wherever it's allowing everybody or people in the tech spaces allowing people to work from home right but certain if we're just talking from the business level certain businesses don't have the luxury to allow their employees to work from home so you have to account for both um, the lack of income coming in because people aren't shopping everyone is at home out of fear but also um, the people who are hour, hour, hourly and they are not salary. So if you don't have a savings or whatever, or you're living paycheck to paycheck, you rely much more heavily on this income, um, working a full-time job or a part-time job um, because you're getting a bi-weekly paycheck. So if I'm like a local restaurant in, um, We'll say like Texas, where you have just lost $300 million from South by Southwest being canceled, then you have just um, all the waiters, the dishwashers, uh, the regular people, um, you're taking a hit because the businesses are closing, so you're not getting that paycheck, but you're also getting a deficit because the fear of people going out, they're not buying the foods or whatever. And so it goes with um, schools, universities um, being shut down and people um, taking classes online now. So you have 
um, the groundskeepers not getting um, the money that they would go for the upkeep of the yards and the quads, the janitors not getting their upkeep because they're not salary. And this is how you go from a bull market. So a bull is good, a bear is bad. A bull market is like a thriving market, the money's traveling or whatever. And a bear market is kind of like, um, like a precept to like actual dis uh, recession. So the stock market has dropped 15% um, just from the start of this video and I haven't like checked back in on it. But in short, you have shorted the markets. And what shorting means is that there are drops in sales. So all the investors, all the people, uh, the brokers or the people um, doing the stock, they are seeing how everybody's not traveling, every businesses are closing, um, people are not shopping. And so by not doing that, um, Everyone has to be conservative. And so this shorts the market, which is good for investors if you want to enter the market, but it's bad for us regular uh, folks who um, are not salary or are middle class or you're in like the lower class when it comes to economics. So if this is not affecting like freaking Tom Hanks and his wife got it. And um, Ruby Gobert from the Utah Jazz and the NBA, we are hearing just y'all need to know what fear mongering sounds like in the media and social media and not listen to idiots. These people are leading with the number of cases. They are not leading with the number of recoveries. They are not leading with the number of deaths. Right. And so if the flu is killing more people on average than the coronavirus. We are literally just afraid of the name. Coronavirus, Cor like it just sounds foreign, right? But if it had just a little cute name and it was called the cute virus, you would not be as afraid of it. But because it's foreign, because it started in China, if it started in the United States, we would not be as afraid. Um, we would not care. And I just want to to show like how cyclical this is when it comes to all these diseases. 2002, West Nile virus came. Thought this was gonna kill us, did not kill us. 2004, SARS, thought this was gonna kill us, did not kill us. 2005, bird flu, thought this was gonna kill us, did not kill us. 2009, swine flu came, thought this was gonna wipe us out, didn't wipe us out. 2014, uh, 14, the Ebola virus. All these things, all these pandemics, all these epidemics that we thought that this fear that we allowed to lead to actual recessions was going to kill us, did not kill us. But what will is fear, misinformation, um, and the lack of being informed. So if you are canceling flights right now, don't do that because I have, I think probably 10 friends that are flight attendants and they're like, yo, we are perfectly fine. If anyone's going to die from this disease spreading or catch it, they're going to catch it. They are flying the most out of everyone. So in short, we need y'all to like not freak out and just know who's actually dying of the disease. The people that are actually really prone to the disease and dying and being infected of it, it are people with weakened immune systems. So um, smokers, their, um, their rates of dying from it are very high. Weakened immune systems. Um, obese people. Um, so you're already prone from um, dying from it because you already have um, predepositions of it, right? And then um, young um, infants, because again, a weakened immune systems, and then old people. All right. So I just want to give y'all um, <laughs> some tips when it comes to like, hey, we need to act rationally and behave rationally. All right. And I want a major key right now, 2 Timothy 1, 7. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. This is what happens when you have non-Christians being officials and you don't have Christians being led by the Holy Spirit in positions of power, right? God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. That is why it is spreading so fast. But fear should not be able to spread 
more quickly than a sound mind. I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So if you're a professing Christian, you need to behave like one. You need to behave like you believe in the blood of Jesus is able to cast out demons, able to heal the sick, and the blood of Jesus is able to um, have people to recover and um, believe in the word. You cannot be acting like the world. You cannot do that, right? And so... I, I, I need y'all to understand this, like the real life long-term consequences of this if we actually go into a real recession because people are not behaving normally. And so if you are like stocking up on preservatives, this is counterintuitive because if you remain in your house, like they're closing down um, gyms. Um, this, um, so these preservatives that you're eating with like non-fresh foods and like uh, fruits and vegetables, this is what weakens your immune system and makes you more prone to dying of the coronavirus. And even those little masks, the masks that you are getting, they do not stop you from getting the coronavirus. It stops you from spreading the coronavirus, but no one knows this. So you're stocking up on all this food. You're stocking up on all uh, this and you're disaffecting everything. Like, yo, wash your hands. This is like common sense. We need rational minds right now. Um, but um, if you're not working out, your immune system is going to um, d not decay, but it will become weakened comparably if you're getting out exercising, going to the gyms, and that makes you more prone of actually dying of the flu or the coronavirus, but the flu is actually more likely, or even freaking a car accident is more likely of you to die than a coronavirus case. Uh, so um, that's counterintuitive. The foods that you eat, the um, chemicals and the preservatives in these canned foods, they weaken your immune system also uh, because they're not fresh fruits and vegetables. So the, eating those are more harmful than you going out um, to your local restaurant, sowing into the um, stock market and the economy so that uh, <laughs> we don't go into a recession or whatever. And um, by not going out or whatever and traveling, um, you're creating like a germ incubator, <laughs> um, essentially. Um, so, yo, act normal. So. My top five um, tips, I want to start with um, number one, yo, pray, read your Bible, um, get off of social media, um, be godly, and um, don't let fear overtake you in the news media. They do this every year, almost like almost year, every year, and it kind of lands on election years or however, right? Uh, don't let <laughs> don't let them do martial law on us because some people don't have like again the economic stability or luxury of being the upper class or salary or being in like the tech field um, to be able to encounter natural disasters right uh, number two like wash your hands but actually like go um, get out travel um, spend money um, and just have our economy to go back to normal so we don't like fear doesn't create an actual recession so we don't know like if travel is um, suspended for 30 days and like just the NBA March Madness all these things are canceled we don't know how long it's going to take for the economy to recover so we need people to act normally so that um, a real recession um, is is not in the works, and that is that's way more problematic than the coronavirus. All right, um, number three, this is an amazing time for you to buy stocks, right? So the stock market, you have just shorted the market, moving from a bull market, a thriving market where all the stocks are expensive, to a bear uh, market, almost a recession. Not like. Like you have little dips. It's not like a real like 2008, 2007 recession or whatever, right? Um, so stocks like Tesla, which were going for like $300, they're um, actually much lower right now, I think in like the $200 range. And so this is a great time for you. If you are like, hey, 
investing in stocks were like too expensive for me to get on. Um, recessions are actually the best um, time to buy. So when everybody is in a recession and it's like, oh, you can't like um, sell your house or whatever, um, the housing market goes down. Um, people are actually buying. So if you're an investor or a buyer, it's a great time for you to um, invest in the stock and get really good stocks for kind of cheap or really cheap because everything's falling, everything's dipping out of irrational fear. Number four, it's a great time for you to, um, to fly. Um, same thing, same case. Everyone's not flying out of fear. And so all the um, ticket prices are dropping. So like Atlanta to Miami is $40 right now. I'm getting a ticket to Los Angeles. So thank you, Corona, for sponsoring my trip to Los Angeles for $89. Do you know this is a bull market when it comes to tickets? I'm loving it. And it's great, right? And um, number five, top thing you should do during the coronavirus um, situation is um, spread the gospel instead of spreading disease and spreading fear and spreading um, pandemonium, right? Because um, people um, who are in power or people who are non-believers, they don't have um, the Holy Spirit like to give you power, love, and a sound mind. Everyone's um, reacting emotionally and this is what's crashing the stock market and this is what is making all these dips and de deficits this is what is um, having like just irrational movements right so you as a Christian as a believer you act rationally you um, continue to tell them the word of God you continue to prophesy you continue to uplift you continue to encourage and this is what it comes from 1 Corinthians 14, 3. If a man prophesies, he encourages, he edifies, and he comforts. All these people that are um, instilling fear, they are not comforting anybody. The Holy Spirit is called a comforter, he is called a helper, helper, and he's called an advocate. This is what the staple of Christians are supposed to be. We're supposed to be watchmen. We should be knowing this stuff coming before the world comes, if we're in our prayer classes, if we're in our word. And we're not going to die of this. We're going to die of something else. <laughs> Probably uh, driving or uh, the flu. Uh, because those rates are, or obesity or smoking, because those rates are way higher than the coronavirus. But, yo, thank you uh, for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, share this video so people don't act dumb and <laughs> are afraid and actually know what the real death toll is. Know the real um, cases. It's like, I don't know, 180,000 cases, but only 5,000 or 4,000 deaths. And only like 34 people died in the United States. So we're fine. All right. Y'all go in peace. Jesus loves you. He's returning to judge the world. Grace and peace. I <laughs> go. Amen. Oh, I want to pray. <laughs> Dear um, Jesus, Holy Spirit, um, be of the world um, well, um, at this time. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we ask for um, your spirit um, to lead people into repentance. For you have not given us the spirit of fear, but you have given us the power, love, and sound mind of your um, Holy Spirit, of your baptism, of the name of Jesus Christ. Make us believers, staples in our communities. Um, we just call um, Israel, the United States, and the stock market just to recover, uh, to be the leading um, principles and staples um, here. That uh, we don't go into martial law, we don't go into um, quarantine, we don't go into anything of a deficit or a recession, and we don't go into anything that is not of you, Jesus, but you give us the ability to have a sound mind. And also, um, this is just a great time for believers for um, investments um, in um, flights and missionary um, work and a great time for us to give the gospel of evangelists. You said, get do the work of an evangelist. So we pray for um, us to have power, grace, our words and wisdom. Um, let us move accordingly and let us uh, have just the gospel of Jesus Christ on our list for that is the spirit of prophecy. 
Lord, we pray that the hearts will uh, be repentive, renewed, and we just give you all the glory, honor, praise Jesus, that non-believers will be baptized and be born again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.